join us. Nobody does Star Wars like the power of the Force from Kenner. Hey, hey, Star Wars fans, welcome back to another episode of Power of the Force Friday. We're taking a look at a couple of the hardest workers in the galaxy, the Ugnaughts. Um, these have so far, you know, sort of bypassed my attention because I do actually have them on my Cloud City diorama within my sort of Empire Strikes Back, you know, modern Star Wars themed shelves, as opposed to having these guys included on my Power of the Force shelves. That's only because I don't have any modern interpretations of the Ewoks, uh, <laughs> Ewoks, Ugnaughts. They're both short little guys, okay? Um, so yeah, I thought we'd take a look at these guys. I sort of just panning over a over a list of figures I hadn't done, I thought, of course I have I've missed the Ugnaughts. I need to I need to look over at my other shelves because there are some characters within there that are still not included in my Power of the Force uh shelves simply because, you know, they I don't have the definitive versions of them, so they they're good placekeepers until that happens. So yeah, we've got a uh, Ugnaught Bill on the left and Ugnaught Frank. There's just the names I'm calling them right now. <laughs> There's no no real rhyme or reason. Um, I still think these figures quite hold up. Maybe not the one on the right. He's a little bit, a little bit on the basic side. Um, and given that we've got characters like Quill that have come out in super articulated vintage collection form, um, you know there was a there was a legacy collection pack of Ewoks, which uh, Ewoks. They're not Ewoks. I'm going to get in trouble from the uh, from the Ugnaught Identity Union <laughs> for calling them Ewoks. Ugnaughts. Um, yeah, there was a legacy collection pack that I, you know, it goes for stupid money now, and you know, I think it's it's hard time that Hasbro chuck a couple of these guys on a vintage card back. So I'm pretty sure this is the only accessory these two come with. And I still don't know what it is. I thought it was like a briefcase, but it's sort of... I don't know. I haven't even like paid attention to the movie to the point where I'm like... Oh, is one of these little guys carrying something like this around? Yeah, I honestly haven't looked. But let's look at them one by one. Uh, you can see his little face there. It's sort of screwed up looking... He almost looks like a like an angry old little Scotsman, just with the, uh, you know, that's probably me being very stereotypical, just because he's got sort of red hair. So I do apologise. I know I know the Scotsmen aren't easily offended. They're they're a tough tough folk, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, they're, not, they're not the most attractive of species in Star Wars, are they? But, as we learnt from The Mandalorian Season 3, they are highly regarded as, as hard workers. You know, whether it's their, you know, dedicated mechanics, droid smiths, carbon freezing chamber operators, which we sort of saw that in The Clone Wars too, in the Citadel episode, where they had to go to a... The Jedi had to go to a more... And the clones had to go to a you know, a slightly more civilised carbon freezing chamber. And again, it was still operated by Ugnaughts. I got it right that time. I got it right. Yes. Ugnaughts. Um, yeah, here's the other guy. This is uh, Bill. He's got his, got his sort of work smock apron, which looks like it'd be removable if you wanted to. Because um, it's a separate piece. Obviously, slightly different underneath, but you know, if you had a, if you picked up an extra one of these, you could cut that off and you know have a very slightly different Ugnaught. Yes, two for two. <laughs> I like this one because he's got the two little upward fangs, a little pig man, like a little wild boar. So based on his grey hair, he's slightly older. You know, maybe their maybe their teeth sort of come in there, sort of upward fangs, sort of come in later in life. There's some of those sort of extended features, like the uh, slightly more furrowed brow over the top of the eyes there. 
Yeah, I do wish I could get a hold of a couple of the more modern modern Ugnaughts. Three for three. Um, <laughs> he's got his work gloves on. And I feel like he should be holding something, whether it's a tool or something like that. I might have a look and see if there's something I can give him. See, in 1998, Kenner, China. Yeah, obviously they came in the same pack, so they should be the same. 1998, LFL. So yeah, a couple of a couple of real simple figures here. Articulation. He's got a swivel of the head, swivel arms, and then a swivel of the waist for this guy. This one is swivel head, swivel arms. And yeah, just a swivel at the waist for him too. So I'd love to. I'd love to get some more modern Ugnaughts and have them on the uh, more sort of modern display shelf, so I can then go put these up with the Power of the Force. But you know what? I'm I'm actually going to a toy fair this weekend, so you know if I can pick up a couple of these really cheap, I might just do that, and so I can have some duplicates, put them up on the Power of the Force two shelf. You know, that is a pretty important part of my collection. So, anyway, just wanted to show these off this week. Um, given that I had bypassed them for so long, I wanted to give a, give a look at the Ugnaughts. 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 It's in my brain now, folks. It's in my brain. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your time. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I hope you enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up if you did. Um, back back every other week for Power of the Force Fridays, uh, at least for the end of till the end of April, and May is going to be a very Phantom Menace focused month. So I'm looking forward to looking forward to that. Um, so until then, may the Force be with you always.